Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now in this week's video, which is split into two parts, I'm going to uh, go around my local area and the subjects that I'm going to photograph are horses. Why horses you might ask? Well they contain the extremes of light and dark, they have this lovely textural quality and above all they are truly beautiful animals. And uh, to photograph the horses I'm going to use my 6x6 medium format camera, the Pentacon 6 uh, and I'm going to use the 180 sonar f2.8 lens and the 80mm f2.8 biometa lens. And just to make life a little bit harder, I'm going to work with the lenses wide open at f2.8 just to give a different look and uh, feel to the images. Now in the second part of the video, I'm going to develop the film. The film that I used was Fuji Across and I rated it at box speed 100 ISO. And I'm going to develop the negatives in Pyro 510 which is a compensating staining developer. And I'm going to develop them using the semi-stand method. I'll show you how I measure the uh, chemicals out and also the advantages and disadvantages of working this way. And I'll also show you why uh, it's better to use uh, an alkaline uh, fixer as against using uh, an acid fixer. So, on with the video. I'm just going to have a little walk about and see what compositions I can come up with. So we've got a nice uh, white horse uh, and uh, it's full, or imagine it is. So I think I'll get the camera out now and uh, take a photograph of these two. Not only as easy as it looks, just to get these two in the right sort of composition. But uh, oh, this one's that's looking good. So I've got that one. But they're either like they're doing now, going away, or turning it back to me. Might just walk up a bit further and see. If See if I can get a picture of them um, from the front of the wall down there. Just have a little look. Right, that's uh, they've gone running off now. And uh, I'll move on a little bit further and see if I can find some more. Right, just a word about the Pentacon 6 that I'm using today. Now normally I come out with this camera with uh, the waist level finder or the magnifying hood and use it at waist level. But for this type of photography, uh, you're going to struggle uh, uh, getting focus um, and sometimes get mixed up which way to turn the camera because everything's reversed. Uh, so, you know, it's really handy to have different viewfinders uh, for these type of cameras. And so today I'm using this one, it's the eye level uh, prism finder. And when this is on the camera, uh, it, it acts like a normal, uh, what you might call a normal uh, SLR camera, where you're looking through the viewfinder this way. Everything's the right way round and it's much, much easier to focus. So as I say, with these type of cameras, uh, it does pay to have different uh, viewfinders for different situations. And the beauty with the, the East German Pentacon 6 is that these 
different types of viewfinders don't cost the earth like uh, Hasselblad viewfinders or even the Bronica viewfinders are cost. So it's, it's an advantage using these type of cameras as I say because they're, they're quite cheap. Right we'll move on and see what else we can find. So well, there they are. I just heard they looked up. I'll get the camera and cross the road slowly. So it's come right up to me. Unfortunately, I can't get uh, uh, get him in focus at this distance because it won't focus that close. This lens. So, just see if he'll pop his head up. Us, come on. Oh, he's just pausing for me. Got that one. Hopefully that'll turn out. It's just gone straight up to me. Take a lovely portrait of this now. Wide open. F2.8 180 so now. Come on, look at me. Got it. Oh, I got that one. Really pleased about that. Just looking at me like that. Photographed on the uh, focused on the eyes, and hopefully I've got it in there focus. Right, I'm just going to walk a little bit further up uh, the wall and see if I can get that uh, white horse to look at me somehow. Wish I had an apple with me. <laughs> Just got a great picture, hopefully it turned out. Uh, couldn't video it, it happened that quick. It uh, laid down, sat down and rolled in its, on its back, kicking its legs. Uh, probably because it had a bad itch. But uh, well, I just hope that's turned out. I think it'll make a lovely image. Got too close now. <laughs> you want some grass? Come on. There you go. Have some grass. That's it, that's nice. They all came up to me and I just couldn't focus, they were too close. I might put the 80mm on and just see if uh, see if that'll work if I come closer. I think the f closest focusing with this lens is around about, uh, I don't know, 6 feet. That's the closest focus distance with the 180, so now. So I'll put the 80mm the, uh, on and see what happens. If they do come closer, it means I can get the picture. Yeah, come on, cross. That's, it. That's a good horse, eh? That's a good one, right? Well then, give some grass. Cross. Hey? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Horse. I've just come lower down the field and saw this horse in its stable with its head sticking out, out of the stable door. And uh, I'll get this sonar, uh, 180, uh, again, wide open and uh, take the shot. All the uh, foreground will be out of focus and it'll just lead you to its head sticking out of the door.
Well, I think I've got a friend here. <laughs> there you go. Right, just uh, taking three pictures of this horse. Use the roll up. Uh, 80 bio tile lens to take the pictures. And uh, I'm going to go back now and uh, develop these uh, this film in the Pyro 510 and show you uh, the semi stand method. So, bye bye, horse. You're a beauty, aren't you? You're a beauty. You are. Say bye bye. <laughs> right, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me taking pictures of the horses. I found it a, a very stressful experience, uh, one of the most stressful videos I've done and I think it's because where I was actually positioned at the side of the road, um, right up, right on the grass verge up to the stone walls and uh, the cars were coming back close, coming up and down and making so much noise and it just, it just stressed me out. And, and the other thing that uh, didn't help was uh, the, the choice of lens and the aperture that I, I chose to use, uh, just purely from a uh, a point of view of getting pictures looking slightly different. I used the 180 sonar and the 80 millimeter biometer lens, lens uh, wide open f2.8 and there's little room uh, for error when you focus manually focusing with these lenses especially the 180 lens and it, to make matters worse it's on a medium format camera so your depth of field is, is even narrower at, at that aperture of f2.8 uh, and the horses, uh, you know, they just kept moving all the time. And the only time I could get a decent picture was uh, when they when they were what you might call static. And that's when I took the pictures. And hopefully um, I, I've got the pictures that I wanted to do. And they're in this uh, developing tank uh, on the spiral ready to be developed. Now, I mentioned in, mentioned in the beginning of the, the video that I'm going to develop these using a the semi-stand method in 510 Pyro. Uh, you can buy this from the Zone Imaging Lab who kindly donated this for me to try it out. And I've been, I've been using the Pyro 510 uh, for a few weeks now and I'm really getting to like it. Now, the uh, film is going to be developed for 15 and a half minutes um, and it's going to be minimal agitation. In other words, you're going to have the first minute of continuous agitation and then only one inversion at the 10 minute mark and then pour the developer out after 15 and a half minutes and I'm working at uh, 20 degrees centigrade. Now just a word about the massive uh, dev chart if you've, if you've not been on that or you have been on it. If you've not been on it, go on it. It's a great place for getting starting times but you have to be careful sometimes using the times that they give and the times that they give for the uh, 510 Pyro, uh, apparently, and according to James Lane, the uh, Zero Imaging Lab, they are for rotary processing times, not inversion in a small tank. So don't use those times. If you buy this, you, you'll be able to download from Zero Imaging uh, website, or it might come uh, with a developer box, uh, a list of times, of uh, films and times, uh, for using in small tanks, using this developer. So as I said, just be careful of the massive dev uh, chart times. Now, there are advantages uh, and disadvantages using semi-stand development. First of all, the disadvantages. Um, the first one, uh, which can be uh, problematic, is what we call bromide drag. And it's where the development is not even on the negative. And it tends to show more in the highlights where you get uneven development. You get streaks of light and dark. And that's called, as I say, that's called bromide drag. Um, so that, that's one of the things that you can struggle with. Uh, I'll tell you how to try, how to avoid that, the best way to avoid it in the video. Um, and the other thing is the, the, the actual times uh, for developing certain films. Uh, I'm developing Fuji across, semi-stand, uh, 1 to 100, and it's 15 and a half minutes. Now, for certain films, it can be longer. And it just depends on the dilution that you use, and it can be longer still, it can, up, can be up to an hour. So that's really the main disadvantages of you working uh, using the semi-stand method. Uh, the advantages uh, are quite a few, but I'll name uh, the main ones. Uh, one of them is <clears throat> because pyro, uh, all pyro developers, put what's called a tanning effect, some people call it a staining effect, on the developers, and I'll show, show you that 
uh, when I've got when I've developed the the negatives, and it's like a brown stain on the negative, and that uh, normally builds up in the highlight areas, and it protects the the highlights and stops them from over developing. That's why it's a, what you would call a compensating developer, but because you're using extended times, um, and that tannin that tanning effect is in the high, the higher density areas and highlights, it gives uh, more time for the shadow. Uh, development to build up so using this type of developer you, you won't blow the highlights uh, off a scale so to speak they'll always be manageable and uh, that you will get really good shadow detail and you get some nice depth in the shadows so that that's that's one advantage big advantage the other advantage is is what they call the adjacency effect and that's where when you're leaving the when the when the developer's stood and and it's not moving, it's just developing the, the 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 negative. It develops at the edges where light meets dark on the negative, and uh, it's where uh, unused developer and used developer sort of meet, and it creates this. Uh, I forgot the name now. Is it a maculine? I'm not sure about that, but it it, it creates this apparent sharpness on the edges of of the uh, negative. And uh, it, it, it creates uh, sharper looking prints. So th that's another advantage. And, the, and obviously the other advantage is uh, it's not a stressful process. You're not de dealing with development times of six minutes. We're talking about 15 and a half minutes. And uh, you basically uh, put the developer into the tank, agitate it, and then leave it to stand until the 10 minute mark. Agitate once and then leave it till the end time. So in between those times, you can just relax, go make a cup of tea, um, you know, whatever. Uh, it, so it's not a stressful process. I, I find it quite quite enjoyable, actually. One of the main things you have to remember, and we're going back to bromide drag, and it's critical, is the actual agi the first minute agitation. You have to get that right. And I normally agitate like this, with a twisting motion, gently. And I do that for one full minute and that ensures that the negative has received all the developer all over the surface of it and uh, it, it, it'll minimize you getting or it should eliminate you getting bromide drag um, and then as I say you, you just uh, agitate at the 10 minute mark just once and then leave it to, to the to the end now <clears throat> Once you've done that, you don't use what you call a, a, a stop bath, a chemical stop bath. You just use water to stop the development. And then you'd fix the film as you would normally with any other film. Now, for mo most of my films, uh, I use uh, Ilford uh, Rapid Fix. It's a great fixer. It fixes very fast. But you're probably better and more advisable to use what's called... Uh, an alkaline uh, fixer as against using uh, an acid fixer and the reason for that is when you're using the pyrotype films if you use the the uh, the, the acid type fixers they remove that brown tanning effect from the negative actually removes it or, or partially removes it whereas uh, the alkaline ones will leave that intact so I'd always recommend using the alkaline fixer for all all pyro uh, developers uh, there's no need to pre-soak when you're using the semi-stand method just get your film in the tank get all your chemicals up to temperature and just pour it straight in so th there's no pre-soak and once you once once you've done that initial uh, agitation of one minute at the beginning you get that right um, you, you just as i say uh, switch off until they 10 minute mark and then agitate one more time and then and then uh, um, uh, pull the developer out now i'm working at 20 degrees centigrade so that gives me the 15 and a half minutes that's what the recommended time on the the sheet from uh, the zero image lab tells me uh, to do it for that amount of time the other thing uh, which is quite uh, critical is to measure the 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 chemicals out accurately because uh, we're dealing with small quantities, you're better using what they call oral syringes. And I've got them in different sizes. That's uh, a 20 mil one. And then you can, you can buy them in all sorts of different sizes. That's a 10 mil one. And then I've got a, a 5 mil one. 
and um, that way you can measure the chemicals out accurately. Now pyro, uh, 510 pyro is, is very thick, it's like a, a treacly a consistency and uh, to get the, the, the this, this um, syringe into it it's, it's impossible because the opening is big enough. I find the best way to do is to, to use a little container like that, this is a measuring container, pour in the, uh, the Pyro 510 and then draw the, uh, the developer up from this canister accurately and then pour it back in what you haven't used and then seal it up. Now as I said make sure that when you draw the, the uh, developer up into the syringe that it, it is accurate. Now because I'm using this tank and it's saying that the minimum, minimum amount is 500 mils I'm going to use 600 mils so I'm going to be drawing up uh, 6 mils of developer and then topping up with water to 600 mils. Right I'll uh, get on with the development process now uh, I, I can't show you it all because we're going to be stood about for uh, 15 and a half minutes but I'll show you the main parts and then uh, I'll show you the uh, difference between uh, the alkaline fixer and the acid fixer and how the the uh, the brown stain or the tanning effect uh, stays intact using the alkaline one as against the acid uh, fixer. So right we'll get on uh, develop the film now. Right the water's up to temperature. I've poured some of the Pyro 510 into the small graduate and now I'm just going to draw up six mils of the developer just let it settle for a second or two and that looks about spot on is that I'll get the uh, graduate and before I add the uh, the um, developer to the water. I'll just put a little bit of water into the graduate, large graduate, and then squirt the Pyro 510 into. Sometimes what I like to do, uh, using another graduate with just the water in, just to make sure we've got all the, the developer out is just to pull up a syringe full force it through and that will make sure all the developer has gone into the water and once I've done that pour this uh, back stuff that I haven't used really thick gooey solution as you can see it's a little bit like a Kodak HC uh, 110 and its consistency in fact I say it's slightly thicker you could probably make this a little bit thinner by soaking it in uh, warmer water just to lower the visco viscosity of the solution right now I'm going to top up the Solution to 600 mils. That's correct. Give the mixing uh, paddle and just give it a little mix up. Make sure it's well mixed into the water. Bob it into the tank, which is set at 20 uh, C, and then just uh, bob the thermometer in just to check that the temperature's not dropped. That's about right. It's quite warm in here actually, so <coughs> um, I don't think the temperature's going to uh, the temperature's going to alter much at all. Now, once that's done, get the timer. Take the lid off, 
Now remember I haven't pre-soaked. Pull the developer in and once it's all in start the timer. Start the time now and then agitate gently for one minute. This as I said is a very important part of stand development. It will stop you getting the dreaded bromide drag that will otherwise ruin uh, good pictures. A little tap, remove the air bells and I'm going to take the top off, put my, the thermometer in and that way I can just keep the eye on the temperature. At the moment it's still, still at 20 degrees so that's absolutely fine. And just a word on the, the fixer, the alkaline fixer. Uh, when you uh, buy it, it's it's like a white a solution, and what happens the uh, the, the uh, chemicals sink to the bottom. So before you mix it up, the mixture is one to three. Give it a really good shake up, and then uh, as I say, dil dilute it one to three, and this is the working solution. That was a stock solution, but before I use this, I would also suggest. To give it a nice invert a few times just to make sure all the chemicals are mixed up. So that's it now. Uh, just sit back, go make a cup of tea, and uh, wait till the 10 minute mark. And we'll come back, uh, do the inversion at, at the 10 minute uh, mark, and then uh, leave it to 15 and a half minutes. Uh, stop bath using water. I'll probably do three uh, changes of water. Uh, to stop the development and then put in the fixer and I'll show you the uh, the actual uh, way that I uh, fix fix the film. Right we're coming up to the 10 minutes. Tank back on and it's just one gentle agitation and then leave it to stand to the uh, 15 uh, 30 time right I'm coming up to the end of the uh, development time and uh, I'm going to pour the developer out uh, 10 seconds before the 15 30 time and then um, use water as, as a stop bath and then come back and fix it so go, go get this um, uh, stop now the development Right, done the stop bath. Now I'm going to pour the, the, the fixer in. Just give it a little bit of a shake up. Start the time and um, just give this a good agitation. And after about 40 minutes, 40 minutes, 40 seconds, I can lift the lid off safely and um, just to see if the film's cleared. And if it's cleared, I'll probably give it another extra 40 minutes. So in total about 1 minute 30. So I'll take the lid off. Have a look, see if the film's clear. Yep, that's cleared. So I'll just keep uh, agitating it and I'll do it for 1 minute 30. Very strong ammonia smell with the alkaline fixers. And after I've done this, I'll wash the film and then hang it up to dry and uh, show the negatives. Just get 
funnel. Whoops. Pull the fixer back. Bob the lid back on, make sure I get most of the air out. Just squeeze the container, push the air out. Then go wash the film and then, uh, as I say, I'll show you the negatives. Just before I forget, uh, the final thing that I'm actually going to do is just add a tiny drop of wetting agent. Just want a tiny drop. This is Ilfatol wetting agent. Pop it into the tank and then just give the film a good swirl about and leave that to uh, soak for about two minutes and then take it out and that, that'll uh, stop it streaking, getting water streaks on it and it'll dry even. Right, I've got the film now. It's all been uh, well washed and wet in agent uh, to make it uh, apply, put in the, uh, in the water to make it dry evenly. I'll just pull the negative off the reel now. And straight away I can see the, uh, the brown stain. I'll let that, uh, let that dry now. And uh, what I'll do is I'll show you the difference between, as I've said before, the alkaline fixer and, and and the acid fixer and just show you uh, the difference in the, the 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 tanning effect and how much the um the the, the acid fixers like ilford rapid fix uh, remove the the the, uh, br the brown stain from the negative right wait till that uh let's say to lay dry and then uh i'll get them scanned and uh, i'll show you the pictures so this is the uh, negative that's been done today in the Pyro 5, 5 uh, 10 and I've used the Alkaline uh, uh, fixer and this is one that I've done although this one was developed in Pyrocat HD but the principle still remains the same. This one on the left hand side was fixed with the Ilford Rapid Fix and you can see, although it might be difficult on this video, I can clearly see it, that the tanning effect is far better on the one we've done today on the right hand side. So it's a, a good idea really when using the pyro type developers always to use a, an alkaline uh, fixer. Not just because it, um, you know, it retains the uh, tanning effect but also it's more cost effective because they last longer than the, than the acid fixers such as uh, uh, Ilford Rapid Fix. So I hope you can see the, the difference there.
Okay, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a, a longish video, but I do believe it's important uh, to put as much information into the videos uh, to show other people who want to try these methods. Now, there are other developers on the market that uh, can do semi-stand development very well, but after using uh, 510 Pyro, I think it does a, a really good job and it's well worth uh, trying. I found the negatives easy to scan, I think they would be easy to print in a dark room and I hope the pictures speak for themselves. So once again, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. Better still, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. And as I always say, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video.